became infected with the AIDS virus when he accidentally cut himself during an autopsy of a patient who had died from AIDS. Almost immediately, that doctor, Malin Johnson of Nashville, began aggressive treatment with a combination of drugs, and today, the most sensitive tests can no longer find the virus in his blood. If this is a medical miracle, it is a miracle that is now happening across the country, as new drugs taken in combination are giving thousands of people infected with the AIDS virus new hope. Dr. Johnson has learned a lot about AIDS and AIDS treatment since he took on his own case. Well, certainly this is an education I wouldn't give back. You wouldn't give this back? No, absolutely not. If you could go back and not cut yourself? Um, no, I wouldn't. I say that, I say that in part biased by the fact that I think I'm going to be okay now for a long time. I mean, it's an education I never would have had. Johnson's education began at a this VA hospital office. affiliated with Nashville's Vanderbilt Medical That's Center, where he teaches and works as a neuropathologist. On September 14, now, 1992, Johnson volunteered to do a brain autopsy on a patient that. who died from AIDS. It was all routine until... It was just a split-second slip of the scalp, and it, it just happened incomprehensibly fast. And, that, and uh, that split second has changed my life forever. So what did you do? Well, I ripped off all the gloves and immediately ran to the sink, uh, rinsed the wound with Clorox. And uh, the only alternative which I'd thought about just briefly was just to cut my thumb off. And of course, if you cut off your thumb and then you find out that you didn't get infected, you feel a tad foolish. Seven months later, on his 39th birthday, Johnson found out he was HIV positive. What went through your mind then? I knew immediately that I was about to embark on a rather interesting battle and uh, that there had to be some way uh, to beat this death sentence. So from the beginning, you were optimistic? Um, in a way. I mean, you know, I was... A tad unnerved by the whole experience, but there are just too many bright researchers working on it for too long to have the carnage continue unabated. So Johnson turned to that research and found a few studies which showed positive results in patients who early on were being treated with the drug AZT in combination with other drugs. At the time, that went against conventional wisdom. Most doctors waited until patients developed full-blown AIDS before they prescribed AZT because if taken too soon, the thinking was the AIDS virus might develop resistance to the drug. My view was that you might as well go on and take some gambles and try, uh, try antiviral drugs in combination and, and just take a long shot that you could stem the course of this disease or slow down progression until better drugs were developed. You were experimenting with these combinations of drugs on yourself well before it was commonly accepted to do so. I just happened to have access to information that was being presented at meetings um, before the major papers were out. But there was nothing that we tried uh, just for the hell of it. But he was trying things few others were. Johnson convinced his doctor to put him on a virtual alphabet soup of antiviral drugs, AZT, 3TC, DDI, Delavirdine, and IL-2, a cancer drug that researchers were testing on AIDS patients. You had to push people to do what you did. Yes, because there is tremendous uncertainty at that point about what to do. Some people were saying, these are the only drugs we have. We need to hold them till you really need them. But uh, from my view, it was much better to die fighting than to start fighting when you're dying. And what happened to Johnson's CD4 cells, the good cells that make up the immune system after taking IL-2? The day before I took IL-2, my count, my CD4 count was 320. And then after two months, I took it again, and my counts rose to 920, which is like, Whoa, you know, I mean, you know, if I could dance, I would have at that point. Not only have Johnson's CD4 cells remained high, but researchers who test Johnson regularly can no longer find the virus in his blood. But it could be in your lymph nodes still. 
We don't know that the virus has cleared the body completely. But when you look at his blood, you don't see any evidence of the virus? That's non-detectable. Mm -hmm. But then we have several hundred patients right now that are probably showing the same thing. Several hundred patients who, like Johnson, now take protease inhibitors, a breakthrough class of AIDS drugs that are helping thousands of HIV-infected people across the country. They were approved by the FDA in December of 95. How do they work? HIV is a virus that infects healthy cells and then uses three key enzymes to reproduce. Drugs like AZT attack just one of the three. The new protease inhibitors attack a second enzyme. It's the one-two punch, the combination of different drugs working together, that is having such promising results. Promising results not only in people like Johnson, who has never developed full-blown AIDS, but also in thousands of people literally dying from the disease. For example, David Sanford, an editor at the Wall Street Journal, was infected with the virus back in 1982. Just a year ago, he had all but given up hope. I would see, you know, evidence of human striving, ambition in people, and evidence of human hopes and dreams in other people, and I, I, I would say this is irrelevant to my life because I'm dying. How bad did it get for you, physically? A year ago, it was very bad. A year ago, I was gaunt and, and emaciated. My clothes hung on me, and I, you know, I could see bones in the mirror that I didn't know that I had. You thought you were going to die in the near future? In the near future, I did. I don't mean this is an insult. Mm -hmm. You're not thin. Not now. <laughs> That's right, I gained 25 pounds. What happened on the way to your death? Well, I got a call from Martin Peretz, the, the owner of the New Republic, who was an old boss of mine, telling me that he was had a friend at Harvard who was a doctor named... Parrott sent Sanford to see Boston yeah, AIDS specialist no. Dr. Jerome Groupman, who put Sanford on an aggressive combination drug regimen that included protease inhibitors. In less than a month, the number of HIV particles in Sanford's blood went from 6,000 to under 500. It's hard even to conceive of how I felt a year ago because I no longer feel as though I'm dying. I no longer crave it. I don't have... I don't have contingency plans to end my life. I'm not, uh, I'm not in that mode at all. I'm back, back among the, uh, the living. We're at that critical point where we know we're doing really well, but we don't know how well it's going to be. Dr. Anthony Fauci, a world-renowned AIDS expert and a director at the National Institutes of Health, is encouraged but cautious. Will other things intervene that might dampen the enthusiasm that we feel now, namely, will the virus reemerge in a resistant form? The other possibility is that the toxic effects might ultimately preclude someone being able to stay on the drug for a period of time and might even outweigh the benefits. We asked Dr. Fauci about Malin Johnson. The most sensitive test can't detect the virus in his system, and they haven't been able to find it for almost two years now. But there still is the possibility that there are other hidden sanctuaries from which the virus can re-emerge. Sanctuaries like the brain, the testes, or the lymph nodes. If you look at it in three major steps, A, does the virus disappear from the blood? If that's true, then the next step is, does the virus disappear from lymphoid tissue that you are available to examine? If that's true, then the final proof of the pudding is what happens when you stop the antiviral drugs, does the virus come back? And the answer to that? Is we don't know that right now. But there is one case where the drugs were stopped. It was at a small San Francisco AIDS clinic run by doctors Brad Saget and Steve Scheibel. They treat about 50 patients from their kitchen table. A little over two years ago, this patient walked into their clinic soon after he was infected with HIV. He wanted to opt for aggressive therapy. So we put together this four-drug cocktail, and, uh, and basically he responded within a week. What about detecting the virus in the system? Using the most sophisticated tests, we, um, he very rapidly, I believe it was about week 28, became undetectable. And he remained undetectable for 78 weeks. So Sangat and Scheibel decided to take the next step. They sent out a sample of their patients' lymph nodes for testing, 
and they waited. We received the, the phone call from the doctor who did the scientific test to determine whether or not there was virus there, and he left a message uh, on our machine, and basically out of the thousands of lymph node tissues that he's looked at in his career, this was the first one that he has ever not seen any virus from an HIV-infected individual. And we were very, very, very happy. Um, we were dancing because, in the streets, essentially, because yeah, we, we, were, we really thought that we were onto a cure. So you thought you had it beat? We were... We were hoping. Hoping. <laughs> we were hoping we were then, hoping. but we found out it was a little bit more complicated. Complications that surfaced when they took the final step. He was in 89 weeks of therapy. Then we removed him with his consent. Took him off the drugs. Took him all off right. his medications. And what we found was that the virus replicated very quickly within a week and it returned. That one case tells us that you shouldn't declare the ball game over when you do a biopsy and you don't see any virus. Viruses can exist at very, very low levels, perhaps beneath the level of detectability. And that's the reason why it's a, it would be a very good thing if the virus were not detectable. But that doesn't mean that it's not there. What do you think when you hear people talking about a cure these days now? I'm not counting on it. There is none. There are drugs that are expected to be approved next year and thereafter, which are going to be, uh, make life more difficult for the AIDS virus. But uh, there is no cure. I, I, for, for many years, I have believed that there was no hope. Now there's hope. You think AIDS will ultimately be cured? I think we may be able to turn this into a chronic, manageable disease. Something that's treatable. Right. But um, the ultimate revenge against this virus is to get up and go to work every day. And, and that's what's important, not whether you have a thousand virus here and, you know, 200 here and 100 here or none. Um, what's important is that we can slowly through development of better drugs, stop the carnage. A final note, it's important to remember that the AIDS drug combinations don't necessarily work for everyone. And even when they do, their cost, up to $16,000 a year, keep them out of reach for the vast majority of almost a million Americans and more than 27 million people worldwide infected with HIV.